Okay, so what do we have here? Well, obviously we have the number eight and the number 20, but the question is, what is the LCM? And if you don't know what LCM stands for, it stands for the lowest common multiple. And this is very, very important in uh, basic mathematics, especially when you're dealing with fractions. So you kind of start learning about the LCM uh, in elementary school. You certainly use in middle school and beyond. And again, you have to have a firm grasp of uh, what the LCM is and how to calculate it in order to do well with fractions. So if you know how to answer this question, go ahead and put your answer uh, into the comment section. But uh, what would be even more interesting is your definition of what the lowest common multiple is. So if you think you can define that in your own words, put that into the comment section as well. And I'm going to actually show you the answer here in just one moment, and then I'm going to walk through uh, what the LCM is and how to find it. I'm actually going to show you two ways of how to find it, kind of a long way and uh, a better way. So we'll get to all this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm here to tell you that you can be successful in mathematics, okay? But what you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, check out my math help program. You'll find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Also, if you happen to be preparing for some sort of special test or exam, things like the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, ASVAB teacher cert uh, certification exam, things like that, all those tests, almost 99% of the time, have math on them. Okay, so I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my uh, homeschool program for middle and high school mathematics. If you need a pair of comprehensive math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video, but you need to learn how to take your own great, awesome math notes. That's really, really important to be successful in mathematics. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into this lowest common multiple. And I'm pretty sure everyone's heard of the LCM, uh, but don't confuse that with the LCD, although the two are similar okay but let's go ahead and answer this question uh given 8 and 20 what is the lowest common multiple the answer is 40 okay so if you got that right well let me give you a nice little happy face in a plus plus uh 100 and a few stars so you can have an extra special day nice job okay so uh again if you got the answer right that's excellent but i would give you a bonus here if you're uh, in my math class if you can define what the lowest common multiple is what is the lowest common multiple well i think it's better that we actually see it in action um, to define it okay so let's go ahead and take a look at what multiples are in mathematics and then we'll kind of be able to define uh, the lowest common multiple again lcm stands for lowest common multiple and we're trying to figure out the uh, lcm uh, given these two numbers. All right, so what is a multiple? Okay, so kind of understand these words, the lowest, right? Pretty much everyone understands what lowest is. And common is if two things are in common, it means, you know, they are the same. We just kind of understand this word right here, multiple. All right, so let's take a look at eight, and then we'll look at 20. So let's look at multiples of eight. But what does that mean? Well, it means that eight's being multiplied by uh, these nice uh, um, uh, natural counting numbers. We'll start, well, well it's actually going to be more than that, but we're just multiplication, all right? So 8 times 1, we'll start off um, with the first multiple. 8 times 1 is 8. So 8 itself is a multiple of 8. Uh, 8 times 2 is 16. So 16 is a multiple of 8. 8 times 3 is 24. 24 is a multiple of 8, et cetera, et cetera, right? So uh, here... Uh, 32 is a multiple of 8 because 30, uh, 8 times 4 is 32, and you get the idea, okay? So these are all multiples of 8. Now let's look at multiples of 20. So 20 times 1 is 20, so that's a multiple of 20. 20 times 2 is 40, so 40 is a multiple of 20, okay? Because 20 times 2 is 40. Again, you get the idea. 60 is a multiple of 20 because 20 times 3 is 60, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so these are multiples of these respective numbers here. 
these are multiples of 8, these are multiples of 20, and this goes on infinitely, right? So we could just continue to go on and on and on and write multiples out. But I wanted to show you um, uh, kind of what a multiple is by kind of writing it out this way, writing a list of multiples. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the lowest common multiple. But before we get to the lowest, let's just find some common multiples or uh, a common multiple. All right, so let's just look through this list here. I'm like, oh, look, I see this has an 80 as a multiple. And so 8 has uh, 80 as a multiple, and 20 also has 80 as a multiple. Pretty cool. And they do have um, infinitely other multiples in common. So if you scan the list, you're like, oh, look here. They also have 40 uh, in common as a uh, multiple. So let's see here. Uh, the multiple that's less than 40 is 20. Does this have a 20? No, it doesn't. So what is the lowest uh, common multiple or multiple they have in common? It is 40. Okay. So, of course, that is the answer. Um, the lowest common multiple between 8 and 20 is 40. So you might be saying, oh, that's awesome. Anytime I uh, do a problem like this, I'll just write out a whole list of multiples and then look for the lowest common multiple. And actually, it's not a bad uh, approach, but there is a better approach and more uh, of a technical approach, something that you're going to need to know, especially if you uh, continue to uh, study algebra, which most of you, 99.9% .9 of you, will be taking. So you want to be uh, thinking about how to find the LCM in this manner. Okay, so again, it's not to diminish what I just explained this because this uh, clearly shows what multiples are and how to find the lowest common multiple, uh, kind of a more basic um, uh, approach. But these are easy numbers to find the LCM. But let's go ahead and find the LCM of 8 and 20 um, using uh, kind of the more a more sophisticated approach that you're going to need for more um, advanced mathematics. Okay, so let's get into it. So here's 8 and 20. And what you need to do is you need to prime factor each number, okay? So you do that using a factor tree. So if you're ever, uh, pretty sure most of you have seen a factor tree. So here's how it goes. So let's just start with 8, okay? So 8 is the same thing as what? Well, it's the same thing as 4 times 2. So every time uh, we have, these are factors of 8, okay? A fa factors are um, numbers such that when you multiply them together, you get back uh, they form a product that gets back to that other number. Okay, so 4 and 2 are factors of 8. But when I look at 4 and I look at 2, which one of these numbers is a prime number? Well, if any, right? Well, 2 is a prime number. So uh, kind of a good way to build a factor tree is to circle that prime. Anytime you hit a prime factor, just circle it. Okay, that's basically what I wanted to say. So we're going to circle that 2, and there you go. Okay, so we have one prime factor right here. But 4 is not prime, so we need to keep going. So 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. So this is prime, this is prime, and this is prime. So all three of these numbers, this number times this number times this number, is 8. So 8 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2, which we want to express as a power. So this is 2 to the third power, right? So uh, just so you know, uh, 2 to the third power just means, hey, we're taking 2, we're multiplying it by itself, three times. Okay, so that is prime factoring, a nice little easy number like that. Let's go ahead and prime factor 20. So you could start off by saying, oh, 20 is the same thing as 2 times 10 or 4 times 5. You'll get to the same final answer. It doesn't make a difference uh, how your factor tree uh, looks. All right, so looking at uh, 20 as 4 times 5, 5 is a prime factor. 20 is not prime. I'm sorry, 4 is not prime, so we have to continue to factor so we have 2 times 2 times 5. These are the prime factors of 20. So I could think of 20 as the same thing as 2 times 2, which is what? 2 squared times 5. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. Okay, so this is really important. So we're going to think of 8 uh, as 2 cubed. Okay, that's just, uh, um, the way we're expressing its prime factors, that number's prime factor. And 20, we're going to think of as 2 squared times 5. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about how to find the LCM. All right, so to find the lowest common multiple, what you need to do is you need to multiply each prime factor between the two numbers. Okay, so let's go back here and let's look at the prime factors. Okay, so we have, uh, let me kind of uh, make this really clear here. 
so there's no confusion because this is where the good part comes in too. All right, so here are, this is a prime factor, this is a prime factor, and this is a prime factor. So when we prime factored both of these numbers, we ended up with this as a prime factor, this as a prime factor, and this is a prime factor. So the lowest common multiple uh, is basically a little formula that says, hey, take each uh, unique prime factor and just multiply it by itself. We have to have each one represented. Okay, so let's go ahead and just go and, and uh, build this out. So the LCM, we have 2 to the third and 2 squared. So the que this is like the first question that um, uh, probably the most uh, uh, confusing question that students have when it comes to the prime factor. So what is the what is the number here that we're dealing with? Well, it's two, okay? So in the LCM, should I put two or do I need to put two cubed and then a two squared? No, okay? Here is how you do, uh, do this, okay? This is two cubed. All we care about is this bottom number, all right? So this is a two and this is a two. So all we need is one, two, represented in our LCM. Just one two, okay? But which two? Do we do two cubed or two squared? You always do the highest power of that number, okay? So this is two cubed, this is two squared, so we have to have a two cubed represented. That's why when you prime factor, you need to write your prime factors in terms of powers because you might have something like a two cubed over here and a two squared here, so you always pick the highest power of that number. So when it comes to two, we have to have a two cubed uh, in our little LCM in terms of our factors. So that takes care of the twos. And then all we need here is our five represented. So that's two cubed times five. And, and remember, two cubed is what? Two times two times two, which of course is eight. So this is eight times five, which is 40, okay? So uh, again, uh, to find the LCM, you need to know how to factor and prime factor. And basically, the technique I just showed you here is the exact same way, um, the same procedure that we use to find the LCD of fractions. Okay, so if I had like 3 uh, over 8 plus, or 3 8 plus uh, 1 over 20, okay, and I wanted to find the LCD, the LCD is 40. You might be able to kind of see this easy. Uh, uh, in terms of um, uh, looking at this as fractions, but the LCD is the LCM. These numbers here, if I'm finding the LCM of the denominator, that is in fact the lowest common denominator. But this little kind of procedure that I, I uh, showed you here uh, by prime factoring, this comes into play even in algebra when we're dealing with variable expressions, etc. So really, really important they understand what the LCM is and its role in fractions as the LCD. Okay, so hopefully this video helps you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you need help with anything fractions, okay, LCD, LCM, all that kind of good stuff, let me give you a couple of suggestions. One, I have a lot more videos on my YouTube channel, many, many more videos on fractions and all that kind of stuff related to fractions. But uh, if you want some great formal instruction, I would recommend two of my math courses, my math foundation course, which is a great little mini course, um, three chapter, go through basic mathematics, kind of the stuff you learned in elementary school and some of middle school, which of course covers uh, this as well. Uh, and or my pre-algebra course, I really get into fractions there um, as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.